When do courts work? I think there are historical examples of where courts have worked effectively, and that's primarily when they've played a supplemental uh, or supporting role. You aren't going to be able to escape courts. Right? As Alexis de Tocqueville said, eventually every policy, political question, becomes a legal one. They're going to get there uh, at some point. So you need to think about uh, how these questions are going to get to court. Right? Uh, and so if you can try and shape uh, legislation so that courts perform a, a supplemental role, uh, they can actually, I, I think, uh, be very effective in, in implementing reform, helping implement reform. The second thing is courts need clear standards. The, many of the problems that result from judicial policy making is that courts have to craft standards, uh, reforms, out of whole cloth, uh, from their own resources. Uh, and so if you can do the heavy legwork lifting beforehand uh, and come to them with clear standards, which they can then enforce, it goes a long way uh, to uh, uh, improving uh, their ability with, uh, to, to implement education reform. I give examples of this in, in the paper. I think Title VI is a good example, spe special education, and then religious speech with the Equal Access Act, I think, all, all constitute good examples of the court playing a, uh, an, an, an important role in, in education reform. I'll conclude with simply saying that I still think the temptation is to look to courts. You can get frustrated uh, with the political process. It's slow. You go to courts. They can issue an opinion. Uh, they can uh, hand down orders, and things might even actually happen. They say spend more resources. Often resources will, will start to flow. Uh, but then you also, of course, have to look at what are the consequences of that. And I think you always need to keep in mind um, the, the advice of the great policy and legal analyst John Wooden uh, that we should not uh, mistake activity for achievement. <laughs>